On October 1, 2015, the cargo ship El Faro was far in the Atlantic, threading its way between Florida and Puerto Rico. Far to the east, a storm was growing fast. The wind was howling over a hundred knots. Seas towered over 12 meters. By the time El Faro neared its path, the storm had turned into a monster, Hurricane Joaquin. On the bridge, the crew fought the ship and the storm. Somewhere far below, the hull flexed against the force. And then, silence. Her AIS signal stopped. Radios went silent, just a gap on the map where she should have been. The crew of 33 souls were gone. In minutes, only witnesses were the waves themselves. Days later, the Coast Guard scoured hundreds of miles of empty ocean, and what they found was a grim sight. Floating debris, empty lifeboats, and oil slicks. No ship, no crew, questions multiplied. After several weeks, an autonomous deep search vessel found her, upright 15,000 feet below the sea surface. But the real mystery was still locked away. What happened in those final hours? The answers lay buried with the ship, locked inside a device most people have never heard of, a ship's black box. Most people know airplanes carry a black box, the indestructible witness to every flight. What you may not know is ships have one too. And in the case of El Faro, it was the only voice left to speak. Despite the name, a ship's black box isn't black at all. It's a bright, high visibility orange capsule built to be spotted amongst wreckage even in the harshest seas. But this technology wasn't always part of the story. For most of maritime history, accident investigations were detective work done in the dark. Investigators relied on weather reports, fragments of wreckage, and the memories of shaken survivors, if there were any. It was a system full of loopholes. Witnesses disagreed, logbooks burnt or sank, and sometimes the sea simply erased the evidence. By the late 1990s, the stakes were too high. Ships had grown into billion-dollar assets. Cargo could be worth more than the ship itself. A single grounding could even cost more than a small nation's annual budget. Accidents without reliable data or onboard records most times created disputes between ship owners and insurance companies. The International Maritime Organization, or IMO, stepped in, and from July 2002, voyage data recorders, or VDRs, became mandatory on most large vessels. Cargo ships, tankards, and passenger liners. But what exactly are these devices watching over the voyage? And how do they survive what the ship cannot? The heart of a ship's VDR is a sealed capsule, usually mounted high on the vessel, often atop the bridge or on a mast. The location is chosen for visibility, survivability, and the best chance of retrieval after an accident. It's no bigger than a carry-on suitcase, but it's built like a war safe. The paint is just the surface. Beneath it lies an armored shell of hardened steel or titanium, strong enough to resist corrosion and survive pressures found 6,000 meters beneath the sea, enough to crush a submarine like a soda can. Inside, a ceramic thermal blanket insulates the electronics from fires hotter than 1,100 degrees Celsius, heat fierce enough to melt aluminium. And if the capsule breaks free, an acoustic beacon automatically begins pinging once per second, a sharp rhythmic signal that can guide search teams for up to 30 days through deep water and darkness. But the VDR isn't just a box, it's a ship's nervous system, hardwired into dozens of instruments. Navigation inputs feed the VDR with the ship's exact position, tracked by GPS satellites, and the heading, taken from the gyro compass, which tells you the direction the vessel is actually pointing, even if the current tries to push it off course. Then comes speed. But here's the nuance. There are two kinds. Speed over ground tells you how fast the ship is moving relative to Earth, useful for navigation. Speed through water tells you how fast it's moving relative to the water around it, which matters more for performance and maneuvering. Both get recorded, because in an investigation, knowing the difference can explain everything from unexpected drift to why a turn didn't go as planned. From the engine room, 
the VDR captures every mechanical signal. The engine telegraph, an old but still reliable system, logs each command sent from the bridge. Captures not just what the ship did, but what the crew intended. Propeller shaft sensors measure RPM, showing how hard the engines were working. Power systems report voltage, load sharing, and if backup generators ever kicked in. Environmental data paints the world around the ship. Radar scans for vessels and coastlines. Echo sounders check the water's depth, and weather stations record wind speed, direction, barometric pressure, and even visibility. And on the bridge, a ring of microphones listens continuously, logging every word spoken, every alarm tone, even the dull thud of a heavy wave hitting the bow. Every signal becomes part of the story, a timeline of decisions, movements, and conditions. All of this is stored into a protected solid-state memory inside the capsule. If disaster strikes, the capsule will carry the evidence. But first, someone has to find the wreckage. If the vessel sinks intact, search teams start with the basics. Check the last AIS position, drift patterns, and weather data to narrow the target zone. Then, they listen for the VDR's underwater locator beacon. In shallow wrecks, divers can follow the sound directly. But in the deep ocean, the work belongs to remotely operated vehicles. These underwater robots are equipped with mechanical arms steady enough to pick up an egg, yet strong enough to wrestle the capsule from crumpled steel. Sometimes, the VDR might remain bolted to the bridge deck. Other times, it could be torn away and half buried in the silt. Either way, the design is intentional. One single cable harness connects it to the ship's systems. Cut that, and the unit is free to lift to the surface, or be winched up by crane. Once recovered, the capsule isn't pried open on the key. It's rushed to an authorized investigation lab, where specialists transfer its contents, but in a sealed, static-free environment, a workspace that prevents tiny electric discharges from corrupting the data. The raw data is like a puzzle dumped onto the table. Investigators synchronize it all into a single timeline, revealing choices, mistakes, and moments of heroism that would otherwise vanish into the deep. And sometimes, it's the smallest design choices that make the biggest difference, not just in ships, but in everyday life too. Like this chair. It didn't survive leaning back just once. And honestly, that's the problem with a lot of chairs. They're unstable, uncomfortable, and eventually break down. And this one, it doesn't even move. That's exactly why we switched to the FlexiSpot C7 ergonomic chair. For work, the backrest locks at a perfect 93 degrees, with a latex padded seat and adaptive lumbar support that actually adjusts to your spine. And unlike most chairs, the seat depth adjusts from 17 to 20 inches, giving you more room whether you sit forward, lean back, or even cross your legs. The backrest reclines up to 128 degrees with a pull-out footrest. Whether you're animating, gaming, or even taking a power nap, you just slide it out and sink in. Everything is adjustable. It fits a variety of people of all shapes and sizes. It's not just one person's chair. It's a chair the whole team can adjust for themselves. And here's the best part. It comes with a 30-day risk-free trial and a 10-year warranty. That means if something goes wrong, they'll directly replace any damaged parts. Use our code C730 and you'll save $30 right now. Honestly, for less than a dollar a day, it's one of the best investments you can make in comfort and focus. Click the link in the description and try the FlexiSpot C7 ergonomic chair today. Good design means being ready for the worst, whether it's a chair that won't collapse or a black box that holds steady through fire, flooding, and the full force of the sea. Yet for all that power, it begins life as paperwork. A SOLAS mandated device ships must carry to satisfy inspectors and keep their safety certificates. It sits there, bolted in place, quietly complying with a rule written in an IMO convention room. Most people think of airplane black boxes, recovered after disasters, used to reconstruct the final moments of a flight. But unlike airplanes, a ship might not break apart. It might simply go silent, drift around, or lose power in the middle of the sea. That's where the VDR steps in, not just to reveal what went wrong, but to prove 
what went right. Because the VDR isn't just a witness for the dead, it's a teacher for the living. Every recovered capsule is more than evidence. It's a textbook written in real time with blood in the margins. From its recordings, training simulators are built, bridge procedures are rewritten, safety drills are reshaped. In a courtroom, it can make the difference between speculation and certainty. It settles disputes between ship owners, insurers, and regulators. It can prove negligence or clear a captain's name. The power of this recorded evidence becomes crystal clear in high-profile disasters. The Costa Concordia is a perfect case. When it ran aground in 2012, its VDR became the prosecution's star witness. It revealed the exact moment the hull struck rock the delay before evacuation, and bridge conversations that contradicted the captain's official report. Those recordings transformed rumour into hard fact and helped convict him of manslaughter. Even military vessels carry them, though their recordings are often classified. The same device that can exonerate a merchant captain might also reveal patrol routes, stealth tactics, or covert operations, making recovery as much about protecting secrets as finding answers. For naval architects, it's a feedback loop. They study how ships behave under extreme stress, how systems failed or held, and feed that data into their next design. And for families left behind, it's often the only window into the final minutes, the only way to know that their loved ones acted, fought, and made decisions, and didn't simply disappear. The sea will always keep some secrets, but the ship's black box ensures that, when tragedy strikes, the ocean doesn't get the last word. However, even this steel witness has its limits. A voyage data recorder isn't invincible. It's built to survive fire, flood, and crushing pressure, but nothing at sea is beyond failure. A high-energy explosion can separate the capsule from its beacon, leaving it mute and drifting. In rare cases, a fire in the bridge or data cabinet destroys wiring before the information is written to memory. While the capsule is certified to withstand 6,000 meters of pressure, deep ocean recovery is never guaranteed. Wreckage may be buried in silt, wedged in canyon walls, or scattered by currents. In those cases, the signal can be muffled or lost altogether. Then there's the human factor. A damaged or improperly maintained VDR can pass unnoticed for months. Some ships still sail with recorders that haven't been serviced since installation. If the unit fails quietly, the first time anyone notices may be after an accident. And even when it's recovered, the clock is always ticking. A standard VDR stores only the last 48 hours of data in its protected memory. After that, it begins to overwrite itself, erasing older recordings forever. But sometimes, just sometimes, get there in time to answer the question. El Faro's wreck was found 15,000 feet below the ocean surface in the east of Bahamas. To put this into context, the height of the Burj Khalifa is 2,722 feet, and the deepest recorded dive by a sperm whale is 9,800 feet. When the ROV Curve 21 retrieved the VDR, it still held the final hours. What followed was one of the most exhaustive transcript efforts in maritime history. Over 1,100 work hours, a 500-page report, some lines were played more than a hundred times just to decipher the muffled voices and ambient noise. And piece by piece, the final story emerged. The ship sailed straight into Hurricane Joaquin, a Category 3 storm with winds topping 100 knots. Despite multiple weather updates, the captain continually referred to hours old weather information, and the course remained unchanged. The crew believed they would pass safely south of the storm, but they didn't. As the seas rose and the winds screamed, concern spread across the bridge. Hold 3 began to flood. The engine lost lube oil suction, then total power failure. With no propulsion, the ship began to list. Cargo shifted, flooding worsened. At 7.39am, the VDR recorded the final words from the bridge. 
abandon ship. But it came too late. Most passengers will never hear those words. They'll sip drinks on deck, watch sunsets from balconies, and never know what's recording silently beneath the bulkheads. But if the worst should ever happen, it's that little orange capsule that remembers, even when everything else is gone. Not sure yet? The FlexiSpot C7 comes with a 30-day return policy, so you can try it risk-free. Keep it, and you're backed by a 10-year warranty. And right now, you can get $30 off with our code. The link is in the description below. A big thank you to our amazing supporters on Patreon. You truly help keep this ship afloat. We hope to see you again real soon.